In this video, we want to dive deep into the liturgical layout, and that means two things. First, we need to get familiar with the different parts, but then we need to learn to customize them so they serve your needs. So, are you a priest or a deacon preparing for the Sunday homily, or just really anyone who wants to study scripture with a very powerful layout? This is a tool you need. So, come to the home page and make sure you have a card that says Catholic Daily Readings. If you don't, you're going to want to add one by hitting the plus sign and then coming down to lectionary and then choose from this list Catholic Daily Readings and hit add. Now I've already done so and that's why I see this card here. And just click it. Click right in the middle and this is the fun part. Verbum scours the library and brings back everything that I need to prepare for this liturgy. Which liturgy? The one that's open here in the Catholic Daily Readings. Look, I've got this index of live links for the first reading, the responsorial psalm, the gospel. And as I scroll down the page, I see that all of these texts are right here, ready for me as I, um, as I prepare for the, the, the homily that I want to preach. Now, I can even determine which version of the Bible they show in. So come to the top of the tab and you'll notice that it's the NAB that is here selected. But the default setting is the Revised Standard Version. So that might be what you see inside of your Catholic Daily Readings. You can change that by clicking the triangle, typing N-A-B-R-E, and now the New American Bible will populate down below this area. And that's helpful because the lectionary, of course, uses the New American Bible. So if that isn't enough, though, <laughs> over here on the top right, I've got my top five Bibles open. So I can see in various translations, even in foreign language like the Vulgate or the original language, the original Greek. Now, I'm not sure which five Bibles you have, but if you want to see, simply come to your library. I'll open mine in a floating window. And um, come over here to the far right where it, the panel menu is accessed and drop down to prioritize resources. And anything inside of this pane is going to be prioritized. It's going to be in front of other other versions of that same Bible, for example. So, um, I don't know, let's just use as an example the ESV. The ESV is one other Bible that I might choose to prioritize, and you can see how I can position it wherever I want. Maybe it's in number one position, and now when I close my library, and I close my liturgy layout, but then when I open it back up again, guess what's going to appear in my top Bible? the ESV. Okay, so you can play with those settings so that you have um, in your prioritization the top five Bibles in the right order. And so you can always delete this simply by right-clicking and choosing Remove from List. And that's what I'll do now. So again, it resets when I, re when I close everything and then I launch from the home page. And so we'll do that. Now, what else do we see here? Notice that these top five Bibles all have a little A next to them, and that means that they're all in the same link set. You can always see this in the panel menu, that this is set to A, B, C, D, or F. They're all in the same link set, which means they scroll, they move together, right? So when Galatians is selected, well, they all move to Galatians. When Luke 11 is selected, guess what? The NAB is also jumping automatically to Luke 11. And so it is with the commentary down below. You'll notice that that little A appears down here as well. Because my commentary is in the same link set, it moves together with my Bibles. And that's true if I move to Acts, my Bibles move to Acts, and so does my commentary. If I jump to Luke 168, everything over here on the right is jumping to 168. This is the case also with these powerful tools on the far right. You'll notice that the Cited By tool is is over here and it's also in link set A. So Luke 168 is, uh, is open for this powerful tool. Now, I should explain, what is the cited by tool? Like the, the name suggests, it's looking throughout all of your resources, all of your tools, and seeing where is this particular verse cited? Okay, so where in the catechism is Luke 168 cited? Where in the Catholic topical index is it cited? And, well, it's here in this uh, 
this entry on him, also on spiritual adoption, John the Baptist, biblical inspiration, and Mary. Let's just open one of these up so you can see um, one of the possible topics you might be interested when looking at Luke 1, 68. Well, this one here, because as you can see, it, that passage is referenced here. And again, with all of these references from scripture, from church teaching, from canon law, and from ecclesiastical writers, all of these are live links that I can open in, uh, I can open up at a single click. So I'll close the Catholic Topical Index, and I'll close that particular section of the Cited By tool, just so that you can see that you can edit these different sections. You can choose to add or um, delete a section here. I'll add all resources to know that over a thousand results come from Luke 168 if I look at everything in my library. Um, if, if I like uh, this sec the Sacra Pagina series, I might be curious to know that, well, there's 24 results speaking about Luke 168. I can jump right to that section inside of this favorite resource. If you don't like any of these sections, if they're un not useful for you, just hit the little X here and now you can remove them. Okay, so Cited By Tool is very powerful when you know how to use it. And then down below that, we have the Explorer. What does the Explorer do? It, it explores my library to find out all kinds of information about biblical events and people, places, things, media like pictures and hymns and um, my content or the things that I create. You can surf around here, but I'm just going to point out a couple things. Cross-references. This is a lot of fun. Look at this. I have over a dozen cross-references for this single verse in Luke 168. That's surprising. It's especially surprising when you look at my top Bible. The Revised Standard Version doesn't offer any links to any cross-references. How is it possible that the Explorer knows to look at Exodus and 1 Kings and etc.? Well, the reason for this is that it's looking at all of my Bibles, the ones that are open and the ones that aren't open. It's telling me that these, these are scriptures that I might be interested to study alongside uh, Luke 1, 68. So, what else do we have below cross-references? Commentaries. This is particularly powerful when you're doing homily preparation. Or really, anytime you're consulting, you want to consult great resources that, il that uh, illuminate the passage that you're studying. So, for example, here I am in, let's say I'm in Luke 11.5. Look how quickly I can navigate to six different resources. This one's from the ICC, which is open already. But let's open another one from the Anchor Yale Bible. This is Father Joseph Fitzmyers' commentary. I could open the Navarre Bible as well in the same pane. I might choose any number of commentaries. I can always slide them to, the, to that same tab. If that's not enough, I can, I can choose more and look at all of the different options. Here's one from the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible. Let's say that that's of interest. I can always delete these by hitting the X, right? Okay, so now with that, we've almost met everything. There's one little thing hiding behind here that you might not have noticed. Did you see the Roman Missal behind your Catholic daily readings? You can always link there by clicking this, uh, this blue link and see how it opens the tab just behind. This is very important. It shows you the liturgical prayers for, that accompany this particular mass, this particular liturgical reading. And sometimes that can really give insight into the core message, especially on Sundays, on feast days, right? Where the opening prayer and the closing prayer, maybe you want to check out some of the, the entrance antiphon, all of that is available to you in the Roman Missal. I love that these are linked. Okay, so I think we've met all of the tabs. Now what we need to do is make things personal. Let's customize this so that next time we open it up, it opens up just the way we want it. For example, we can change some of the things, some of the aesthetics, some of the visualization um, that, for example, these tabs here. Let's say I don't like how they're stacked one on top of the other. I prefer to scroll down the page. And so I'm going to hit shift and then I'll click this Luke commentary. And then as I drag, look what happens. All four commentaries move with it, not just the ICC, but also the Anchor Yale and uh, the others. Now, um, I, like, I just think that's visually a little bit more uh, easy to read. Now, if you'll notice, this one, this Luke uh, commentary is in mm, link set A. I'm going to do something different. 
I'm going to put him in loop link set B. Okay, so now I'll do the same with these other commentaries, and that's easy to do quickly. Just click and click and one more just to show you that there's another way to do this. Maybe when I am constantly inside of the commentaries and jumping around, I want my Bible to move, but I don't want every single time all my commentaries to move along with it. So here's another thing you can do. You can open even another Bible. Um, for that, you know what I'll do? I'll open my favorites panel and I'm going to tuck it around here since we're customizing things. And you know what? I'll even take my explore and I'm going to move it up here too. And here in my favorites, you'll notice that I have a section for Bibles. And I'm going to open up another version of the, I'll tell you what, let's open up the N-A-B-R-E here at the far right. But I'm going to do something special to this one. I already have the NAB open over here, but what link set is it in? It's in link set A. Do you see that? Let's go to another NAB, but this time I'm going to say send hyperlinks here. The reason that's interesting is that now, whenever I'm in a commentary, guess which one moves? Just that one NAB. And, and that can be helpful so that if I want to keep this one, these Bibles of mine in Luke 11.5, the gospel of, my, uh, of, my, of the day, well, they're going to stay in the right place. But where I'm jumping around, uh, I make sure I do the jumping um, in, the, in, the, in the Bible that I've assigned hyperlinks. So again, panel, and then send hyperlinks here. That can be, that can be a way you do it. Again, I'm not suggesting you follow my, suge my, my preferences. What you need to do is have things work for you. So if you want all of your, um, your commentaries to move together, you know, you can do that simply by simply by putting them in the same link set, in my case, link set B. All right, we've done some repositioning. Let's go a step further. Do you see this double pane here? Um, that means it's locked. I can't, I, can't, um, I can't change this. But what I could do, I just opened my fact book by mistake there, but I can close, I, I, can, I can reposition this if I hit shift, and now I drag and drop just to the left. See that? And now, look, this thin bar is something that I can move. You can always double click these, and now it, it splits evenly left and right of that division. And, um, and I, I might like that. Um, I click the fact book. You can, you can close that by, by closing the visual filters here. Okay, I think I'm almost done with my new liturgical layout. There is one more thing that I know I want to add. You might have noticed that in my Bibles, I have all of these notes. Uh, it was the same in the Gospel, right? Um, I can open those, and this is very helpful to have uh, available as you're studying. You know, you might want to take a note based on what you read in that great passage from your commentary, or your Catholic Topical Index showed you something inside of, I don't know, Redemptoris Missio, and you want to quote it. Well, maybe you save a note for that, and now, next time you come back to these liturgical readings, uh, that, good, that good information is waiting for you. So as you can see, I have a number of, uh, of notes that I've already taken, and they're here in this Andrew Dalton fo file. Uh, I'm just going to tuck that away behind the Catholic Daily Readings, and let's say everything now is just as I like it. Um, I'm going to save this. So the way I can do that is simply by coming to Layouts here at the top right. And then I'll scroll down to see this section from Quick Start Layouts. Be careful because it has one called Lectionary Reading. But we're inside the home page layout. Remember, we launched from the home page this lectionary layout or liturgical layout. So I'm going to choose Replace with Current Layout. And see how now it says Custom? That means that when I close everything and now I relaunch, let's do it. But this time, I tell you what, let's relaunch for next Sunday. I don't want today's readings. I want to prepare the homily for the Sunday just around the corner. I'll click the calendar, choose the corresponding date, and now guess what's going to open up? It's See how these vertical panes are here? That means that it's the customized layout, the one where I have link sets in B instead of in A. Now this gives me yet another idea. I, you might like to create a layout which has all of your commentaries for Matthew's Gospel ready to go. Because look what happens here. I've got um, the, 
Matthew 22 for the Gospel on Sunday, but the, these resources that are open in the middle, they're Luke, they're Luke commentaries. Well, what you might do is make a folder inside of Favorites for your top commentaries on Matthew. You know, those go-to sources that you're always using Sunday after Sunday in year A. But then maybe in year B, you're constantly in Mark, and so you have your top, uh, your top commentaries there. And then when you're in Luke, you've got these sources here. What I'm suggesting that you do is you make a new layout, one for each gospel, John, Luke, Matthew, etc. So that when you're at your home page, do you know what another option is? If you don't want to launch the liturgy, the liturgy layout, another thing that you could do is just jump right into your Matthew commentaries, your Luke commentaries. And that's another way to do it. Um, I'm just showing you here that there's so much room for personalization. These are my, my Matthew commentaries that you see here open in the middle. And I don't have to remember which sources to go to. They're already, they're already uh, open and ready to go. That might be a way for you to do it. Uh, again, you don't have to follow my preferences. What you do need to do is get comfortable with the software so that you can make it work best for you. Good luck adapting your liturgy layout. Good luck um, making new layouts for your commentaries on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John.